Hello, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Ayo Dejimatuluko. On this channel, I share information and tips to help you maximize your PhD journey, whether you're a current PhD student or you're a prospective PhD student. If that is something that is of interest to you, you should subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications so that you get notified as soon as I share more content. In today's video, I will be continuing a series I have started where I invite people who have completed their PhD to share their experiences and advice and also share what life is like after the PhD. Today's guest is Dr. Shelly Melianti, one of my friends and a fellow pharmacist who completed her PhD in 2021. I won't do any more of the talking and I would like to invite our guest to introduce herself. Hi Shelly, thank you so much for joining me today. Would you like to please introduce yourself to my viewers? So just share a bit about where you are from, your academic background and what you're doing currently. Hi Ayo, uh, hi everyone. Uh, thanks Ayo for inviting me to this uh, to your YouTube channel. Um, and it's it's pleasure for me to be here and uh, to share my experience. Basically, so I am Shirley. Um, I am a friend of Ayo. Um, <laughs> so I am a registered pharmacist actually from Indonesia. Um, uh, so I'm currently still registered pharmacies uh, from Indonesia, and currently I'm based in the in Bristol in the UK. Um, my academic background, okay, so I graduated uh, in, originally from Indonesia and I got my professional degree as a pharmacist in Indonesia as well. And then I did my MSc uh, in Clinical Pharmacy, International Practice and Policy, where I met Ayo actually. So Ayo is kind of like my uh, um, a college of mine when, when I did my MSc before. And then after I did my MSc, I uh, did my PhD in the same university, which is UCL School of Pharmacy as well, about a pharmacy workforce development in Indonesia. And currently, um, I am working in the International Pharmaceutical Federation as a FIP Data and Intelligence Specialist. So, yeah, that's about me. Yeah. Thanks, Ayo. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much for the nice introduction. That's quite an interesting background. I like your journey from studying pharmacy in Indonesia, moving to the MSc, and now doing your PhD in workforce, pharmaceutical workforce development focused on Indonesia, now you're working in FIP. So it's quite um, very interesting and very exciting. So I wanted to start with uh, my first question to you. Um, knowing you, I knew you since we did our MSc at UCL 2015-16. And I remember when you were talking about doing a PhD, and I remember, I don't know if you remember, or I don't know if I'm right, but I remember you had two options. It was medication safety or workforce development. So my question to you is, how, why did you decide to do a PhD in pharmaceutical workforce development? How did you arrive at that decision? Uh, okay, um, that's a long time ago. I hope that I still remember, actually, <laughs> the reason why I did my PhD, actually. So um, I think... Um, uh, you you were absolutely correct actually at the time I so um in the beginning when I did my MSc I didn't know if I will go uh, if I would go uh, doing my PhD at the time because um it was um I mean doing a PhD in the UK for example is very expensive uh, very expensive as well and you don't get enough funding um particularly if for example you're living in indonesia i mean it's it's, it's it's quite difficult for you unless you get the funding to do your phd um so i realized that basically when i did my msc in clinical pharmacy it was actually like kinds of like my patients um related a clinical pharmacy so that is why i really wanted to do a phd before in patient safety or medication safety uh, but then yeah after i did my msc i realized my patients toward more research i think and kind of like you can do research with anything right and when i come back after uh, when i come back to my country after i finish my msc um i i i mean i work in uh, in the hospital that um that i worked before as well and i started my uh, i started clinical pharmacy there and then i realized there is some there was something basically that that is needed uh, which is uh which is we need a workforce. Uh, I mean, we need a pharmacist who uh, who were ready to practice. I mean, who 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 is competent uh, in doing in doing things in the hospital. And that's something that I think it was missing when when I when I come back to Indonesia and I realized that many pharmacists there is actually um, not quite ready to practice. They need to learn more, and there, there were like a variety skills of um, staff as well. And looking back that and then. 
I, I realized, okay, I think there is something else that I need to do, which is the workforce development, basically. Um, and another thing as well, like when, because uh, when I come back to the hospital, I work as like, not only as a clinical pharmacy there, but also like as uh, as the head of pharmacy department where I manage um, like 70 uh, pharmacies and pharmacy technician in the hospital before. And some of them um, saying to me like they really need something to motivate themselves to build their career and that's something that is missing basically in Indonesia. So um, so I kind of like, like you said, I, I kind of like, I want to do something with patient safety or medication safety. But on the other hand, I also want to do something with vocal. So what's, which one that I should decide at, at the, I mean, at the time I was actually confused. And then um, I think like one thing that, um, that make me like decide after that is basically meeting with couple of colleagues. I mean, I, I, I met with, with uh with the previous phd student previously in the ucl school of pharmacy um her name is actually naoko so naoko uh, let me like this is this is basically things that um how you you would like to choose so um she inspired me at the time and then um i reflected more yeah i think i think what was should be something that i should do at the time so that's why I, I did my uh, my PhD finally in, in the workforce development. So, yeah. <laughs> that, that's really good. So, I like the way you, you really sat down to reflect and make a conscious decision. So, at the end of the day, it has really paid off. But now you went back to UCL. So, was it a natural choice to just move back to UCL? Is it because the supervisor was available or because you had the funding? Or why did you go back to UCL? So um, this is related to the PSD, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, basically, um, I think um, the reason why I uh, I choose UCL again at the time it was because um, not really because of funding because at at the time I didn't have the funding, um, but it was more because when I look at uh, look when I explore basically the topic itself. Um, I, I, when I explore, um, the, the supervisor that I know who is very good in the workforce development is basically in UCL. And then when I read through like the, the, the report at, at the time, that was actually the first time that I know about International Pharmaceutical Federation. And when, when I read that International Pharmaceutical Federation report, I look at that workforce capacity and I realized that Indonesia is not there. So that is why I decided, okay, uh, the professor is in UCL. Um, he is an expert in pharmacy workforce development. And he's, I mean, his name is really big in the global pharmacy workforce. And when I look at back, when I did my research and looking, looking back in the, in the report that published by the International Pharmaceutical Federation, Indonesia wasn't there. So that basically drive me, okay, uh, I need to meet this supervisor and see if i was lucky enough to be his student basically at the time yeah <laughs> and that was successful and here you are today so when you started your phd how did you feel like okay let me look at the whole journey of the phd what would you say some of the things uh, that you learned along the way or things that you wish you knew before you started the phd that's basically what was the experience like um yes so i think my psd experience was quite um i mean i mean every psd experience is always like up and down up and mm -hmm. up and down right so it was always like that um so i think i can answer the questions that you uh you mentioned is in two ways i can i can share my experience like uh what went well exactly from my psd experience so i think for me personally what really went well is um i choose the topic that i like and i choose the supervisor very wisely at the time i mean if for example i didn't i didn't do this topic or i didn't get a, a very good supervisor i would not be perhaps i may not finish my phd i mean because i think um choosing the topic very wisely which is something that you are very passionate about and also Choose your supervisor is very important because you will be with them in four years anyway. So you really need to have someone uh, who who can help you 
who can grow you to be who you who you are now so so that's one that's one thing that i say what went well in my phd mm -hmm. another thing is because my supervisor uh also very very supportive so uh they allow me to go to conference and i think that's also something that is very uh that is that is going that was going really well do, during my phd because i talked a lot in a conference and that helped me basically shaping my research skill as well and my presentation skills so um that's another thing i think um in terms of what uh what i wish to have or what what i wish to to get what i wish to know before um before i started my phd I would say, <laughs> I think this is quite funny, <laughs> actually, I think. So the first thing is, um, I wish I was um, criminal minds before I started my PhD. <laughs> so so to, to, give you, <laughs> to give you a little bit context about that, so criminal minds is basically, um, it's like an American uh, television series. So it's about a group of like criminal uh, profilers who work at the FBI, Federal Bureau Investigation, as a member of like um, be behavioral analysis unit. So they basically like analyze and investigate crimes um, to find like basically the bad guys. So the reason I bring this is basically, I I recently watched <laughs> Criminal Minds and I, did it, I just realized if I watched this before I did my PhD, perhaps my analytical <laughs> thinking will be better because they keep asking why. <laughs> so <laughs> in the... <laughs> yeah, in the film they keep asking why. And as a PhD student, you you need to always question why, right? So why you did this? Why not the other? Why choose this method? Why not the other method? So <laughs> I would say like that's one thing that uh, I would I would I wish I do before 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 I'm doing my PhD. Um, another thing I think uh, is more like uh, to be more organized. I feel myself. I I think I am very organized but it is now if for example i am organized when i when i started my phd or if i keep document my journey and reflect regularly when when i'm doing my phd i think it will be better because i still remember like when i prepare for my fifa i i question everything and i didn't know the answer because i tried to find or find the answer from like uh, a lot of clouds that I have. I have G, G drive. I have Dropbox. I have OneDrive to, <laughs> to compile all of my PSD documentation, which is not good. That's not a good practice. And then I realize about that now. So, so I wish that I can be like more organized and keep document everything into one one thing and I mean one cloud and then also like reflect regularly, basically. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the things that I think that's quite yeah. successful. That's quite Thanks for sharing. I like what you shared about the things that you think are very important. That's interesting the topic and the supervisor. And I remember I did one video on things that people need to think about before they apply for PhD. And I mentioned number one is an interesting topic and supervisor. So I like that you actually mentioned that because that's key for success. And yeah. most PhD students that have had success is usually those important things interest in the topic and supervisor and then the other part about <laughs> critical skills i think along the phd journey you learn how to be more of a critical thinker so i think the phd is shaping you to learn how to yeah. always ask why 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 and justify <laughs> just keep on asking why and why and the point about uh, reflection and keeping everything in one place is also very important because it's true we think we'll remember but at the end <laughs> when we get the end of the phd are trying to remember why did I do a scoping review, not a systematic review? Why did I do this this way? So yeah, I think that's 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 a good point that you have raised. But then you have really good organizational skills as far as I'm concerned because you're a good project manager and during your PhD you did so many things. So you leadership role in the early career from a school group of FIP and all the other things you did when you were um, volunteering and working with FIP. So how did you manage all of that while doing your PhD? Yeah, that's actually a good a good uh, thing. So I think that's that's quite difficult to manage in the beginning. But um, honestly, a as long as you enjoy the time, I mean, um, as long as you can, you can. Um, I think for me personally, um, things that makes me uh, good at it is basically I like doing planning and reflection. Um, 
so in my opinion is basically like if for example you um you want to be organized or you want to be productive it is better for you to always like keep time like let's say for me personally it's also it's always like end of the week so on friday i usually like spend one hour just to see uh what went well what what didn't well and then what what can i do better and what is what my to-do list for the next day and of course it always not be i mean you will not achieve like let's say i have like 20 to-do list but it will not be 20 always so um uh but you learn from that uh so like for example like this 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 time i i mean when i did my my phd I put like another, 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 um, another, like, like I, I mentioned like, like for, the, for my to-do list, like 20. And then I reflect, I couldn't do that. And then I put it a, as a 10. So I managed like make sure that it is, it is also like achievable for me. Yeah. If for example, I achieve that, then it is time for a reward. So that's something that I enjoy myself as well. I mean, like, um, if, if for example let's say i finish writing my thesis um a uh, hundred words today so what mm -hmm. i will do is i'll uh, I, you may know this so i i love um marvel series right i i love dc series i mean i love the flesh so what mm -hmm. i did usually like okay if i finish this 100 words then i will watch um what's the flesh so i mean it's, it's simple but it, it make you it mm -hmm. excite you to do something so um yeah, it's basically like personal reward also work for me. So that's usually what what uh, what I do. Yeah, um, in terms of like how I keep managing everything into one. And the other thing is because I love I love to do that. So uh, loving something and passion in something sometimes you didn't realize about the the time as well. Mm. And support from from your colleagues. I mean, support from your colleagues and your your family. I think that's the other thing that I would say make me able to survive and do all of those things that you that that i did <laughs> during my phd yeah. because you enjoy it anyway so it's, it was quite easy to fit in everything together with your phd so that's quite yeah. interesting so as you were going through your phd or towards the end how were you planning for your post phd career i know your phd was in you're working in the fip ucl collaboration center so it was quite easy to fit in your work with the work of FIP and all of that. But did you make any specific plans for how you want your career to be once you finish your PhD? So um, at the time, I mean, I think I was quite fortunate enough, uh, like you said, because I uh, my PhD was in UCL FIP Collaborating Center. Um, what I did during that time was basically um i asked myself what exactly i want to do after my, my i finish my phd um and because it's more like towards ucl fip collaborating center and i i always i always had a dream to do something in a global context so fip is kinds of like things that um go with me and i'm i'm, I'm fortunate enough to to get opportunity basically um to to work in FIP. Um, so at the time, I think what, uh, I mean, the plan that I did is basically I self-reflect what I like, what exactly I like. Do I like research? Do I like project management? Or do I like data analysis or something like that? And then what I did was I approached actually my supervisor at the time. And then I mentioned like, this is something that I like to do. And is there any possibility to, to, to work in FIP? um but still related to this to the things that i like and uh luckily there is a position and uh and i was in there i mean i, I mean i'm in there now basically which is um which is like my current work is more towards like a data analysis data management project management data collection and there's something that i like it's a research and publication so uh yeah and apart from that as well i mean Related to my PhD, which is about workforce development, mm. uh, I also mentioned this basically with with my supervisor um, that I really like to do something about um, developing like MSc course, uh, for example, in the um, in the advanced practice development, workforce development, which is something that I am working on in my PhD, and there's something that uh, my sup I again I'm quite lucky I would say my supervisor found that opportunity and then 
he bring me to be there so that's why i'm currently also like working in ucl uh, as as an interim for the msc advanced practice program as well so yeah um i think my i think if if for example you ask me about advice i would say you need to you need to like do um a self reflection perhaps and self assessment about your skill um and i would say ayo actually the career development toolkit that we developed something that can help a lot uh uh in terms of, like how you you will build your career after that and like recently the one that i attended which is the leadership development via curriculum i mean, I, i i don't want to 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 do this as a promotion but i yeah. feel that it really helped me actually um even i wish that i i did that before before yeah. i after i finished my phd i mean like um not not really after like before i started building my career post phd so that's also something that can help in my opinion in like building your career it's basically knowing what you like and find as much offer opportunity as you can and that's when your network help in my opinion yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think you, you raised very very important points because if one is planning for life after the phd you need to do a skills assessment understand yourself your strengths your weaknesses the opportunities and the threats around you and the career development toolkit that um, shelly mentioned is something that we worked on when we were on the early career from school um group of fip steering committee so i'll leave a link to the toolkit in the description box below and then i also like the part you talked about speaking to your supervisor so your supervisor is almost not just your supervisor also like a mentor someone that is an expert in the field who you can and you also were not um scared to ask for what you want you knew this mm -hmm. is what you like and you asked for it so people should just ask for what they want because when you ask you find that the opportunities actually exist so i like that you mentioned that skills assessment asking for what you want networking and all of that so um gradually we're coming to the end of the conversation and i just so you work outside academia basically and uh, that's why i wanted to invite you because just to see how people can use their phd skills outside academia because most times the traditional routes for most phds is you do a postdoc or you work in another role a lecturing job within academia so i like that what you're even doing is you're doing outside academia you're also combining a bit of academia with your um, interim position in UCL. So that's quite yeah. good. So do you have any um, general advice for people if they want to think about positioning themselves for careers outside academia after doing a PhD? Like how do you transfer your skills? How do you ex ex explain to an employer just from your general experience? Um, I think I would say uh, it will... Um, Uh, transferable skills is always important um if for example you would like to build your skill set in uh, academia let's say like that um i would say like um you you need to uh, i mean uh, like a framework is really useful in my opinion like like um if for, if like for example we have in um in in the school is basically like research framework we also have like educator framework as well and that's how how i usually like use that um to to look at myself where where am i and what kinds of uh skills that i i i still need to improve more and that's where i learn more about that like for example currently in my current role it's more about like module development module organizations and module delivery but apart from that i also like deliver the module and teaching and for academia usually it's very useful if for example you get a fellow let's say like in in higher education institution and in the uk um that's what they usually call right higher education institution and i'm very lucky to get that fellowship as well and it helped you to build to build it's always like i would say general advice it always reflect on on your skill and your current gap and then try to to fulfill your current gap and find as many opportunities as you can and like like you mentioned as well ayo which is the transferable skills and there's also something that you need to make it stand out i think um because the transferable skills can be used not only in academia but also in um uh, in other other work and i mean like uh looking at like for example in in postdoc experience you usually don't have like much 
autonomy to do because it is basically like you are doing something that is already established right so it again depends on for example if you really want to have more autonomy then perhaps like um like academia or even like um like uh fellowship research fellowship um uh, applying for a grant where you where you have like more autonomy that could be something that uh of interest as well and but it's usually very competitive that i haven't got any experience that but if for example if i get like research fellow or something like that i would love to share my experience <laughs> if i get it someday hopefully <laughs> Yeah, those are very good points that you share. Thank you so much for sharing. And I really enjoyed having this conversation with you. Learned a lot about your journey and the different um, strategies that have helped you along the way, how you manage your time, the importance of mentorship, good supervisor, interest in the topic, passion for the topic, and all of that good stuff. So um, I think I'll just come to the end of our video now. And I'll just end by asking you one final question. And that's... Uh, for PhD students now who are wondering, so how do I survive this journey? People that are currently on the journey, do you have any general tips to share? Aside the ones that you've already shared, you shared a lot. <laughs> Just any <laughs> tips to close? Um, yeah, I would say like enjoy your PhD time more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and remember that PhD is a learning curve. I mean, it's, it's always like a learning experience. And it is okay to make a mistake and it is Im the important thing is how you can learn from the mistake and how you can do better um so yeah uh, expand your portfolio while you can and expand your network and enjoy enjoy your psd i think that's that's the most important thing i would say <laughs> I, i'll end with that just enjoy the journey enjoy the yeah. journey don't be too scared to make a mistake so yeah that's very good thank you so much shirley for joining me today thank you so much for your time and i hope our viewers enjoyed this video and if you like to you can connect with shirley on linkedin and you can follow her on twitter <laughs> and if you like yes. this video you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you stay notified when i upload the next video and i'll see you all in the next video bye bye thank bye. you everyone thank you Ayo. bye thank you bye